It's the Mightiest Nightlier Show. Recorded live from a bedroom in Santa Clarita, California, with your virtuous, hardworking, talented, phenomenal, greatest of all time host, Joanne Jeanette. Music and sound effects provided by the Garage Band Art Band. Tonight's special guest author, radio and podcast host, Tori Ryder. Tonight's highlights, who wore it better? Whose boobs are these? Pick a name for this guy. And Tori likes her kids. Give it up for the woman who says everyone owns a camera now. You can launch your own network on Roku. Joanne, Jeanette. So uh, what, you know is, what? There I, a, is there a photo that you want me to put in there? Yeah, I can send you that or the okay. book jacket, um, which I kind of dig. It's, um, it's all over my, um, if you go to the Tory writer, she said what? She said what yes, website? It's right here. Do you see it right here? Not yet. Yeah, that. So yeah, there's. This oh is a God, really old one. Really old. Yes, it is. And so tell me about this photo because I see, is that Brant Miller? Yes. Yes, it is. Okay, obviously, uh, Larry Lujak. I see yes, Tommy Edwards. I yes. see uh, Fred Winston. And then. Yes. Um, That's Jeff Davis over my shoulder there. He looks so different now because I worked with him at LSFM. Oh, right. Well, yeah. you know, I look different too. We all look very different. 30 years, 40 years. You look bit, very serious. In 40 this years will do that to you. Well, yeah. you didn't want to look like a ditz. That was right. kind of my little, I'm not looking like a ditz. Sure. Yeah. And you were the only woman? Usually. Yeah. Yeah. How did you like that? Uh, well, you know, hmm. I think sometimes I think sometimes it's it's flattering to be the only woman. Right. It depends on the context, uh, but ideally, um, it shouldn't. It, this should not still be happening where there's one per station and usually in the middle of the night and you know or in the middle of the day when there's you know ninety five thousand hits in a row and I, I so to be personally the woman on the station is always flattering i'd be lying if i said that it wasn't but at the same time it's tremendously disappointing in in this day and age when that's true i remember it was about 2003 mm -hmm. and up until i thought things were pretty good between like 98 and 2008 but after 2008 everything started to kind of go back again where there were less jobs. So they went to the dudes and then the women sort of, they kind of put us in that position again to fight. And I, I was like, I'm not doing that. I made friends with these women. I'm not going to fight with them. You know, it's, the it's same. Not, yes. yeah, right. It, it gets to a point where you go, you know, I did my radio thing. then. If that's how it's got to be, then it's not worth it for me. But um, I remember, I think it was Jennifer Weigel had mentioned to Robert Feeder, you know, why, why are all the program directors afraid of vaginas? Like, why are they afraid? Like, if a woman speaks somewhere, why, why, why is everyone afraid of women speaking? It, it's almost like we went backwards after 2008. I'm not sure they're afraid. I think it, I, I don't know that they're afraid. I okay. believe that people are comfortable. And, and this applies in, in many instances where people should be hired who aren't hired. Um, I believe that people are most comfortable with people who are like them. There's a sense of community. We're tribal people. Right. So if, you know, it, it, you see it in religion, you see it in race, you see it in education, you see it in any place where you can group people, people are comfortable with people who are like them. And so you think most of the listeners are just men and maybe that's why? No. Oh, no, that's not what I said at all. Oh, oh you're talking, I'm you're talking. You're talking about the hiring, the program. Oh, directors. the hiring and the program director. You yeah. mentioned yeah, 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 Jennifer yeah. Weigel and her quote. And, you know, why are they just are they afraid of us? Right. They certainly wouldn't be afraid of women listeners. What what could they do to them <laughs> right, other than right. bump up their numbers and make them more money? So, right. no, I mean, in terms of hiring. Oh, in terms of hiring. Yeah, yes. I hear you. I hear yes. you. Yeah, I had a program director um, say, like, we need to get more women listeners. I was like, well, I'm just going to throw it out there. Maybe you play something women want to hear. <laughs> He's like, well, and this was his response. No, that can't be the answer. Like, they, I was standing there like, ah, 
What do you is mean? that a quote? <laughs> I was like, what do you mean? That's not the answer. That is exactly the answer. Play something that do some research on women. It was just funny. Uh, Turi Ryder, you are host of the She Said What podcast and True. numerous talk shows. How many talk shows do you think you've done? Oh, gosh. Um, uh, let's see. Before I wrote the book, I, I, I was most recently on WGN in Chicago doing nights and a syndicated show um, for Kipper McGee that was syndicated through Envision. Uh, so that's, I guess you count that as two. Uh, <laughs> Cairo, Seattle, KFI, uh, Los Angeles, before they were all political. Um, oh gosh, uh, KSTP in Minneapolis for several years, KGW in Portland. Um, I, that's up to six, Free FM, that's seven. I, do I have to keep counting? No, you can stop. I, I'm now, <laughs> and, and then there was the personality music radio, which is kind of a hybrid between uh, talk and music. Right. Do you like doing music or do you like, I always like doing talk more, but I don't know. Well, um, I mean, is there anyone with an ego who doesn't prefer the sound of his or her own voice <laughs> and the idea that people are listening, not to the Rolling Stones, but to you? Is, is there right. anyone? No, no, don't listen to <laughs> Uh, don't listen to me. I, I have nothing to say compared to Mick Jagger. Please, please. Yeah, nobody. Now, I I remember now this and I started to tell you this and you said, wait, wait, hold it. Hold for this when we do the interview. Um, so I was working. I was going to school, media school. Mm -hmm. And uh, everyone there was very realistic to me. I went to that media school in Lombard. Uh, and everybody like Kitty Lowy and the, all the people that taught me, they said, don't try to be famous because you know what, for every one person that knows you, there's going to be 50,000 people who don't know who you are at all. And the chances of being like super uber famous, you know, I mean, it, it's just not practical and famous fleeting. So I, so that was a good foundation right off the bat because you get it. I like, I had asked you what got you into it and you said it was music, right? That you really had like a passion for music. For me, I had the passion for music, but I watched a lot of MTV and I sat around listening to talk radio all day at my job. And I thought, well, instead of listening to people, why don't I go do that? You know, because I was just a data entry clerk over mm -hmm. at household finance. And so you were part of the FM WLS, the 94 seven, when they did the talk format before it went to the kicks country. Yeah. I think that lasted like six months, maybe. Right. But that is where I was like, Vroom. so I was listening to you all the time because I would sit at my desk and I would be doing, I'd be doing data entry. And that's very mind numbing. So I would have a radio sitting there. And the one thing that I just really, really remember there, nobody, this was, I want to say 96, 95, maybe somewhere around there. Yeah. It was, am I getting the years correct? I, you know, I, <laughs> I know it gets blurry, doesn't it? Yes, it does. It does. But I just remember you had done, and it was an evening. So I was at work in the evening that night and I was yes. staying late. And you did a whole thing. And I thought this was very revolutionary at the time. You were talking about how, you know, women in America, uh, it, a lot of us have been groomed to be seen as prey or things to um, conquer, at least in certain generations. And so you were kind of talking about how you weren't going to hold on to the shame of maybe being like duped into sex which is in a way I would say rape by deception, but nobody ever labeled it that before. And so I know plenty of women that are like, oh, he totally scammed me. Like I had this envision and then, and then he like took off on me, you know, or he ghosted me or, and nobody would, had really talked about that before. And so I'm, you were talking about how you weren't going to carry any shame about that. I'm trying to remember if I've ever been duped into sex. I think what I've probably done uh, early in my life was, imagine there was more emotional content to a relationship than right. there really was. And I think a lot of women have done that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty good at saying no to sex, I have to say. Okay. And, and, and it's a practical tool in radio because <laughs> as the only woman, frequently uh, people invite you to have sex with them. And interestingly, this is just my theory about it. I believe that men have large enough egos that if you say no to them and a couple of other people, then they're they're perfectly happy to believe that you say no to everybody. So if you really <laughs> like somebody, you can you can have I've had exactly one, two relationships with people in the business over the course of my radio life. Um, and they were both relationships of 
some duration and right. one of them is still a good friend today mm-hmm. but a lot of people would just if you told them I mean, and people did when people told them that I was dating the person that I was had actually been dating for like a year or more, they didn't believe it because I'd said no to them. So uh, just, uh, tip, tips for girls. If you want men to believe that you are not approachable, say no to four or five people at your station, other stations, say no for a while. <laughs> and then yeah. nobody will believe that you would have sex with anybody else. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. But it was just, it, I remember just that night that I had never really heard any anybody touch on that topic as much. I'm sure someone had somewhere, but I had just never heard that. So that I thought that was very, I mean, you had me captivated beyond belief. So now did you've done so many interviews? So do you, I've always preferred because I did like six morning shows and then I did a bunch of other stuff. I've just done everything in radio too. You uh, have your LinkedIn profile is like six screens to get it, to the bottom of it. It's, it's a lot. It's a lot. And, uh, I, I preferred like, Chicagoans talking to like regular people. Not that I don't like celebrity interviews, but it's just a lot of times they're the dullest people in the world where like regular people that would call in, especially on morning shows, if you have, because I did all the wacky morning shows, all, all the, and not the fake ones. I love I never that description. I, I love that. That's perfect. I, I, and, I, and I hope you'll put that video up there of you doing the underarm fart. Absolutely. Yes. Um, all the shows that I had worked on, we didn't have those fake setup calls because some morning shows across the country would do these fake, um, yeah. fake outrage, yeah. set it up. We never did that. Everything yeah. that we did is crazy and weird as it was, or is bad and unlistenable as it was sometimes we it was always real or at least we thought it was but we didn't set it up so there was a time in radio i, I don't remember around what year i would say like 2010 or something oh let go thing. of the year thing just let go of the year thing all right you're, you're, well because you're, it seems like there's there's trends you're torturing yourself popular. trying to re- or you'd be torturing me if you asked me to remember all the years so. i know but it just seemed there was a time where then they started paying people to have fake conversations on the air. And I went, well, then why are we doing any of this? You know, it just seems so weird that they would set up those fake, you know, oh, he left me at the bar. We got in a fight. And just, to, you know, it was very Jerry Springer. It was very Jerry Springer for a while. And I didn't Well, that may be that. why they were doing it. I, I think I it was. never did it. I mean, I've, I, it, in my book, I, I wondered how long it would take me before I would have to do this <laughs> self-promotion thing. Um, in my book, uh, she said, what, a life on the air. I do quickly mention that uh, I met one of my best friends and a guy, one of the other guys that I would later date for years and years and years uh, when a producer came running into the newsroom where I was sitting um, to, to, to spill the beans that a talk show host there was staging calls had, had fake callers. And we were all gasping like, <gasps> wait, wait, you don't do that. Um, it was considered, it was considered to be just, not done right uh, morning shows and rock radio they do their own thing uh but when i as you pointed out correctly um tr- it, uh, the old cliche truth is stranger than fiction and yeah uh you're better off you you asked me at the beginning of this wh- whom do i like to interview best celebrities or um or regular people on the phone and I was asked to contribute and edit a book some years ago um, with my 10 rules for ta- or 10 tips for talk radio. And to answer your question, not everyone who has done something interesting is interesting. Right. So you're absolutely correct. Uh, you know, so-and-so went to Mars and was the first person to walk on Mars. Joe, how was it to walk on Mars? Yes, yeah, cool. <laughs> it was different. Yeah, it was, it was different. <laughs> different than earth. Yeah. I mean, you get a lot of that. And (laughs) um, so there's that. And then there are people who are celebrities who really um, they're better off uh, just being musicians. Um, I I can think of one who is an absolute favorite of mine and the most atrocious interview that I've ever heard. And also some of them, I hate to say this, are just not well behaved or very nice people. Yeah. And I would rather just appreciate their art uh, and not really talk to them. Mm-hmm. But pe- people, when you do talk, and I'm sure you know this is true, um, you after a time, and and 
this harkens back to your how long was that WLS FM thing on uh, 15 minutes because it really takes three years to launch a new talk station because unlike music radio. Um, if you're playing some particular artist. Um, then the audience can hear one or two of the cuts and they know what you're all about, but if you're a person talking to them on the radio. Um, it takes a while to build that personal relationship. They have to be with you on good days and bad days and days when there's a lot of news and that days when yeah. the, the big news. So, so it takes really a long time. And to expect a talk host on a station who's new, even an established station, to get along with the audience that was with that shift before, it's like expecting if somebody moves into the apartment down the hall where your best friend used to live, you're not necessarily going to be best friends with that person just because they moved into the same apartment. Yeah. Um, you may like them, but it takes time. So that's a very long answer to your question about that's do okay. I like celebrity interviews? And like so many answers I'm afraid you're going to get from me today, that depends. But in general, um, 90% of the time, I prefer the callers. Okay, so how long have you been doing the podcast? She said what? This is a, we are into, gosh, two at numbers. You are a numbers girl. I guess so. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, two and a half years, two years, something okay. like three. We're in season three. Okay. So I guess we passed two years. And um, it is done with a friend of mine who's a radio veteran and a news veteran. Um, like so many iterations of anything new, um, I worked with a, a lovely co-host who, when COVID happened, uh, had to be full-time mom. So she moved off the podcast. Uh, that was Catherine Lake. And then I worked with my sister for a little while and she's smart and funny and terrific. Um, but she has a lot of other commitments because she's sure. a successful writer and editor. So <laughs> lucky for me, my girlfriend, Marcy Persky, is semi-retired, even though she volunteers up, up the wazoo, but she she also works a little bit. She has been a reporter, crime reporter, entertainment reporter, talk show host, um, editor, uh, writer. There's just the editor at UPI, I and mean, back when UPI was really a news gathering organization. So, and she's funny as all get out. And we live like the Green Acres life. She's in rural Arizona, up on a mountain at seven thousand feet. Oh gosh. And I, I couldn't live there for five minutes, but she loves it. And I live in the city. And so we have very different lives and it, it seems to work pretty well. Um, some places we overlap, but but mostly mostly we live very different lives. And you recently had lentils confiscated from the airport? I, I did. I had my lentils confiscated. Um, <laughs> That's just such a weird. So you recently had your lentils confiscated. Yeah, it, there's a sentence you don't hear every day, is uh, right? Right. Like, right. Hey, I hear you recently had your lentils, lost your lentils, did you? It sounds like a euphemism for something really terrible. But it does, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that was a TSA experience. Um, and and in talk radio, I tend not to go with the list, list the things you've had confiscated, but I did the stories that go with the lists can be fun. And uh, I heard some really good um confiscation scenarios from friends of mine on Facebook, apparently. Um yeah, yeah. My my, my spouse one yeah. time tried to get on with some. Oh, I know. He had the kids with him, and he wanted to pe cut up a apple for them. And of course, no knives. That you know, plastic oh, knife. Gosh, no yeah. knives. And right next to him, this little old lady said, "Here," and she hands him this big pocket knife thing that clearly nobody bothered her getting on the plane with it. And I'm. But he can't have a plastic knife. Well, he had the plastic knife. It's yeah, all very, yeah. it's all very surreal these days. Security there, theater. I believe, it, right. You said security theater. So, right. Yeah. It's about the appearance and the illusion more so than, um, well, so we think, I mean, I don't know. I, yes, I, don't I offered, be... I offered to taste my lentils to see if either they or I would explode. Um, but he was having none of it. And oh. so it was a long day on the airplane with no food. Um, so I lived. Sorry. I lived I, well. I'm not exactly, you know, starving away, so it, it was okay. I just get grumpy. Yeah. Okay. It's now. Is this your second book or is this your first book? Now, and this well, is it, a real book. See, here's the here's the difference. You have really published books. You're not doing all that self-publish. 
well, these, these are really published. Let us not besmirch the self publishers, many uh, of whom are won't, extremely competent am. and extremely, yeah. and some of them are really, really good. Right. Um, but for me as a talk show host to publish my own book, I thought seemed like it would read like, read like a big ego trip. So, uh, oh, now she thinks she's going to have to talk to us for four hours a day. And now she thinks we need to spend how many weeks reading her life that heck, who does she think she is? So it was really important to me that, um, that, that I, I have the benefit of an actual real life publisher saying, yeah, we, we want to take this on. So yeah. that was that, that was like a cat being stroked in the right direction. I just heard of that. That was lovely. Um, you, but yeah. the other books are books that I contributed to and edited. Uh, those are done by the very successful broadcast consultant, Valerie Geller. Uh, she works in communications with every kind of communicator all over the world. And I am, um, and she's also the one who got me out of music radio and forced me into talk radio, kicking and screaming many years ago. So I owed her an editing job. Absolutely. And why did you get into radio? What drew, what drew you in? Well, as you mentioned, it was, I, I liked weird music. I grew up north of Chicago and there is a radio station in Chicago, WFMT. Mm -hmm. um, and Saturday nights at midnight, they had something called the Midnight Special, which was eclectic. It had uh, everything from old Bob Newhart and Nichols and May and ancient Second City routines to I was something of a folky, so you could hear Fairport Convention and Steve Goodman and John Prine and Bonnie Kolak. Um, and then from there, um, there was a coffee house on the Northwestern University campus where a lot of the folk people came to perform. And it was a cheap date. It was a, it was like a hippie commune in those days. So I loved that music. And then a friend of mine just sent me an article about this. <clears throat> I'd nearly forgotten. Before there was WXRT, which is Chicago's big alternative rock station, um, and we'll get to that in a minute. There was a station called Triad, which oh. brokered time in the middle of the night on a couple of stations, and they just played anything. And they had a radio guide, and it was mostly head shops, and you know, people came back from India with weird clothing and sold that. And it was it was kind of hippie central. It was in the early '70s, so that I I was there just for the end of that and for the beginning of WXRT. Okay. And I remember when WXRT was brokered programming also in the middle of the night. And so I had this little AM/FM transistor radio, and I would take it to bed with me. And when I realized I was scratching up the headboard of my bed, which was going to give me away, I took a slip because I refused to wear dresses or slips and put that over the radio. And that's what I would listen to all night. So I loved the music and it was my dream to work for WXRT because those jocks were just the epitome of cool. Oh, cool. Right. There was nothing cooler. That or WMET too. Uh, that was a little later, but I worked okay. for XRT for 15 minutes until their competition went under. And oh. I was truly, truly awful on the air. Um, I think that the boss there saw some potential, but when the competition went under, he had a bunch of people he could hire, capture their audience, put them on the air. They were set it and forget it. And a couple of them were there for decades and decades. Yeah. So in the end, it all worked well for everybody, but I was, I was really sad because that had been the dream. But as you well know, Joanne, sometimes the dream you think you want is not the dream you really want. And sometimes the dream you happen into by mistake turns out to be the best dream of all. Right. Yes. Yes. The universe takes us in weird directions. It doesn't yeah. always give us, you know, not to um, quote the Rolling Stones, but you don't always get what you want. Um, and sometimes you don't get what you need, either. <laughs> but it's, it's a journey, you know, you yes. have to look at it as a journey. Right. And, and I, you've had so many radio jobs that you're like, every one I go, oh, maybe this was my last one. And then another one, a couple of years later. So you're like, oh, oh, okay. I'll do this again. So that's the funny thing too. So you when never you really... say, when you say yeah. maybe this was my last one, do you mean maybe I'll do this forever? Or do you mean no, maybe like... I will have a snoot full of this and never go near the radio again? Both like, oh. <laughs> like you go, maybe this will last for a while or then you go, or maybe I'm just done with the whole thing. Cause a lot of people do walk away. They get a little frustrated and I always tell them, you know, just because you lose this doesn't mean that there isn't something else. Plus technology is always changing, right? So if you really wanted to do a podcast, you can do a podcast. If you really want to, uh, Roku, I just got a thing in Roku. They're telling me I can have my own Roku TV channel. 
anyone can have a TV channel now. This is starting to get scary. Yeah, there's so- YouTube and Roku, and yeah, I um, I think the jury's still out on on. I'd like to believe that people will find great stuff, um, but it's I, so saturated. There are yes, yes, yeah. yes. One of the things that I've been doing just since the pandemic, because all of celebrity culture was really getting to me during the pandemic. I'd wake up and it would be like, here's the celebrities with coronavirus. Here, start thinking about the celebrity. And it was just like for the first time in my life, I was like, I don't even care about any of these people because first of all, they don't know me. And and I got to this place where I went, why am I taking these people more seriously than myself? So that's when I, I shut it off. And I've, I've had the TV off uh, over for over a year now. And what I do now is I'm doing everything local. So luckily I happen to be here in LA. So there's a lot of really great local talent. So every weekend, like I'll go to the stand up comedy or the uh, music and we have restaurants over here that have live music. So I'm more in that direction, but they're filming down the street. Do you remember the movie Mighty Ducks 2? Not Mighty I, Ducks 1, Mighty I, Ducks I, 2. I am proud to say I never watched either of them. Okay. They're remaking Mighty Ducks too because um, i think hollywood has just come out they've they've run out of ideas so you remake what worked but they're not making remaking mighty ducks one they're remaking mighty ducks two i've given up trying to figure out why people do these the things, projects but, that they do right but I, I know it's the strangest thing it's like of all movies so it's right over here at the ice rink which is right at the corner uh it's a big ice rink that had um reopened during the pandemic because it went bankrupt and everything because it was closed for so long the owner had to give it up obviously he's like i'm Mm -hmm. just gonna let it fall and a bunch Mm -hmm. of investors came in but now my son is like hey can i be an extra so i was like okay as far as hollywood like i'd rather i don't know about you because you have kids i'd rather have my kid participate in um local theater and not so much the hollywood stuff because that seems to get well, I know from listening to you that you really love live theater. I and do. That's, that's great. I do. And I, I was do. just thinking, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna blow the Mighty Duck referee whistle on you when you say, "Well, you know, I'm just using whatever's local, whatever's here." That's like somebody getting locked into Tiffany's and saying, "Well, I'll just put on, <laughs> I'll just put on whatever they have around." <laughs> I wish. Yeah, I'll just I wear, wish. I'll just wear whatever's around. Oh, uh, yeah. So in, in LA, when you, when you do, I mean, it's the same in New York, you walk right. around New York and the, the people next to you are often really famous people. So right. yeah. Um, and, and everything in New York in general is of the best. You go to a small chamber group, there are people on their days off from, you know, the, the metropolitan opera orchestra. Yeah. It just, it's the best. So how, in long LA, did you li- how long did you live in New York? My family is from New York. I have oh, never, are. yeah, and my kid went to school in New York. So I spent, a, and yeah, I, I have New York roots and branches, but I yeah. have not lived there. I've lived in, in LA where, where you are. Yeah. Did um, you like it? I'm, I, I'm really far North though. I'm more suburban. You know what I'm saying? So what I have to say about LA is there are good people everywhere. Yeah. Um, in general, this may sound odd. Um, couple of observations about LA. Uh, when you do radio in LA uh, and people find out you do radio in LA, what they really want to know is, can you get them on television or in a movie? That That's what radio is to a lot of people in LA. I mean, it, it, not to everybody, but you right. be on the radio and they'd be like, oh, do you know anybody on TV? Do you know anybody in the movies? That's what's real uh, in the entertainment industry for most people in LA, I think, and understandably, I mean, there's radio everywhere, but there's only a big movie TV industry in a couple places and LA is the biggest of the big. So that was one thing. And the other thing I noticed was people who were native Angelinos. Um, and, and I can't claim that I noticed this all by myself. It was pointed out to me by a native Angelino. Um, when you're born there and you grow up there, it's your home and you don't just come to get something, get famous, get money, get a company together. You're there because it's your home and your, and your, your home place. And so you give back because it's your home and you want it to be nice. Um, But there are a lot of people in LA who come to get things. And I generally try to avoid those people um, because I'm not interested in that 
I mean, it's good for them. Let them get everything yeah. they want. That's just yeah. not it, it. And and they avoid me too because there's nothing really they can get from me. So that works nicely. Yeah, my neighbor uh, had just retired, and he told me, "Don't go down there." He said because it's everything has changed. So because everything is, and I said I wasn't really looking to to go do that anyway. But honestly, they film so much up here in the burbs mm -hmm. that you could just be, you just sign up with the extra service and then you show up. So that's kind of nice. Not that I was looking to do that, but if you need some extra cash, it's not well, the worst, it's not the worst gig to stand around. You know, I think you get, what is it? 80, 80 bucks, a hundred bucks for the day. And you stand well, around as an expert. You can stand around your house and get nothing. So Exa by your exactly. math, it's a hundred percent better than exactly. standing around your house. Yeah. Right. So uh, although don't underestimate the the great satisfaction that comes with dusting strange things. Yes. Yeah. 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 That's true. It doesn't Why? pay, but if you have a project to do, you what know, did you, you what did you dig up during the pandemic as you because you you were kind of in a bunk, I mean, were you in lockdown too? <laughs> Well, yes, of course. Chicago's you, a big city and yeah. we, we, you Los Angelino snob there. Of course. We were, what what so do you think this there. is? Like, so, yeah, is this the middle of Iowa or something? This is no. Chicago, of course. Did you find anything we had, weird? Excuse me, but we had just as much COVID as you did. Um, we had it worse. Uh, no, the what a uh, strange bragging right that uh, right. Uh, we well, just finally got our masks gone like two days ago. Finally. Uh, believe they're pulling the mask mandate for Chicago public schools sometime next week. And I, you know, I don't even want to go there. I'm so, you know, I, I move it over. I know me too. No, I wear, I, I wear a mask yeah. in public places. I just, I'm tired of talking about it. Besides okay. no one can hear me because I have a mask over my face. Yeah. So, um, Tell me about when you filled in for John with uh, John. L Were you filling in or did you do a show with L uh, John Landecker? Well, I'll WGA? answer. I'll answer your other question about the yeah. lockdown. First, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Which tell me, tell is me. that I um, what did I do during the lockdown? I have worked for while I was writing the book. I was very, very, very fortunate to have Bloomberg Radio offer me a job doing creative stuff for them part time. So I'd been working. And before that, when the kids were younger, I mostly worked from my home studio, whether I was on the air in Seattle, or whether I was on the air, you know, in Chicago, I had a studio mm. at home. And so I could, we, our kids never really between the two of us working from home, a they never had a babysitter, which was really fortunate. And yeah. we are wildly unusual in that regard. And um, it didn't change much during COVID. To answer your question about uh, John, John will tell you that the reason he started doing talk was because I asked him to please fill in for me in Minneapolis because I thought he could do this work. So we've worked together. Um, we've, we would love to work together at some point full time, the two of us. We love being together. He's probably the only person I would be willing to share a show with. Um, and so sometimes, when he gets lonely, um, he he has me come down to 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 GN and um, and hang with him. Or we back when everybody was at home, we did that um, via whatever electronics we have. And um, so yeah, John has filled in for me. I haven't filled in for John. Uh, we just we get we get along on the air. We have fun. Very cool. Do you have any weird collections? Good grief. Uh, huh. That's an interesting question. I, I strangely inherited. Here's a, here's a thing. If people find out that you have something peculiar, they assume you want a million of yeah. whatever peculiar thing it is that you have one of. So, um, like if, and if you have a, like, if you have, we have chickens in the city, they came with us from California and I had to tell people like, no, I, I don't want any like chicken statues, chicken salt and pepper shakers. Like, no, I just have the three chickens. They, thank you. I don't want to collect chicken stuff. Um, but I do have, I don't even know if I'll send you a picture so you can, okay. you can put, put one in part of this, this part of this interview. Um, those old promotional like the curved glass with a silhouette and the thermometer sometimes that are from like the thirties, forties. Mm -hmm. I have some of those. I ended up with them sort of by accident and 
I, I thought these will make nice bathroom wallpaper. So that's where they are. Do I okay. buy any more of them? No, I don't. Okay. It's really boring to talk about. You should just cut this whole thing out because who really cares? <laughs> How's this? Oh. Is it oh just my one gosh. thing now? Yes, yes, okay. it is. Okay. The fancy snooty model or the rainbow Swiffer duster. Did you do this yourself? <laughs> no, this one, this one I had help with. This is so cool that you, I, I have this, I mean, do they even make a rainbow Swiffer duster? I guess so, yeah. Wow. Um, just imagine, like, if you were at Pride Parade, right. you could wear the outfit and wave the rainbow Swiffer duster. Like and a, do a like little a cleaning. fairy wand. Yes, and clean your way down the avenue. Who wore um, it better? Wait, wait, I didn't oh, even wait. answer. Can I, can, <laughs> yes. I, can I wear the rainbow Swiffer duster? <laughs> I mean, uh, that's a good, you could clip it onto you. Uh, we, I don't want to insert anything anywhere. No, uh, I think it would make like a, a nice hair ornament. It would. Yes, it would. Marcy, my podcast partner, has a rainbow something or other that she just put up on the podcast page recently. I forget what it was. I think a crown or something. I forget. Yeah. Um, but I, um, and, and now I'm looking at this rainbow Swiffer duster and it looks like a, a Muppet with a very thin neck. I can't, I, I think that the, the fancy snooty model looks like one of those brushes at the car wash. Oh, you're right. Oh, I, I think, think I have she, one of those too. Yeah, I think yeah. if she twirled around really, really fast, she, she could take your pinstriping off. I like it. I like yeah. it. You're picking the model? No, I like no. the Swiffer. <laughs> Although I, we were talking on the podcast the other day about how the Swiffer duster is one of those cleaning products. It's, a, in my opinion, a total scam. It is. Yeah, yes. it is. I agree. Who yes. wore it better? One of the Kardashians or a Sacco onions? Wow. Well, I can say this. If if I wore the Kardashian dress, I would look like a Sacco onions. <laughs> oh. So I, I would say that's a tie. Okay. Who wore it better? You have Wolf Blitzer, uh, Kathy McConaughey, Justin Treber, or Ruth Bader Ginsburg? Oh, uh, you know, it would people would think better of me if I picked the little kid because that's what you're supposed to do to be nice, <laughs> right? But I like the dog. I do too. I like Wolf Blitzer. He's cute. Yeah, cute. Uh, these are just photos. I I like animals with wigs, and I like animals in um, clothing. I like to see animals in clothing. Who's so do, do, wait, do you have an animal that you dress up in a wig and in no, clothing? No, my, my cat died during the pandemic. Uh, oh my like, gosh. Oh, I'm I sorry. Didn't, it's okay. I didn't dress her up or anything, but I like when people photograph because some dogs really like getting dressed up. I don't like I, I don't like to see animals forced wait a minute. into outfits. Wait a minute. But how yes. do you know that an animal likes getting dressed up? Look, well, look at this dog right here. Doesn't he look happy? No. <laughs> okay, whose boobs are these? This is a game we play. Whose boobs are these? I, 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 not mine. Marilyn Monroe. Whose boobs are these? Again, not mine. It's a Vanna White. Whose boobs okay. are these? This one, you know. Somebody with a really, really pointy brassiere. It's Madonna. Whose boobs are these? This one, you know. I, you know, why am I expected to know whose boobs are whose? Why, why would you think I would because, know this? Have I we, ever given you the impression that no. I am a connoisseur of boobs? But we were raised at a time when when they sex over sexualized women so much in media that like we would know whose boobs these are. That doesn't mean that I have to go <laughs> know away. what they are. Who as usual, are as usual, I didn't do whatever it was that I was That's supposed true. to do. Good for you. And I'm proud of you. Do you know you have nurse girlfriend? Are? Friends. Okay, that's right. Who's boob? This is Weird L. These are the boobs of Weird L. Okay, who wore it better? Uh, Will Smith or the game Simon? I've never heard of the game Simon. You don't remember the game Simon? Do, do, no, do, but do, I do, think do. Will Smith has a lot of talent, so I'll just go with him because he's talented. Okay. Uh, who wore it better? A loaf of bread, container of milk, and a stick of butter, Stevie Wonder, or Right Said Bread? Uh, uh, <laughs> I will say this, the, the, the Welsh Corgi or whatever that is in the middle yes. photo. Yeah. Uh, the Welsh Corgi looks the most like a loaf of wonder bread. If you're not a loaf of wonder bread. Uh -huh. uh, and as a dog owner, th this is what I get from that picture. You have you or whoever took this photograph has torn the bottom out of the bag 
which means that if anybody tries to pick up actual dog waste with it, they will get an <laughs> unpleasant surprise. And as the woman who has occasionally by mistake put the plastic bag that the potatoes come in with the holes in it, right. in the please take these bags out when you walk the dog, and, and then one of my progeny or my husband will come in screaming and I know the <laughs> potato bag in the big shopping bag of recycled bags. I feel great sympathy with whoever takes that dog out and does not know that it you're going will... right for the poop. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. It's a scatological okay. podcast. I now. like Stevie Wonder because it really looks like bread. His butt really looks like bread. Okay, uh, who wore it better, Mark Twain, who's drinking a Corona, or Mark Twain from the model in this uh, catalog for L.L. Bean? Who do you think wore it better? I, I, I think that the dog with the Corona looks very weird. I'll <laughs> go with the less weird option. Okay, the guy, the guy. Mark Twain instead of Mark Twain. Yeah. Okay, pick a name for this kid. He's either Zane, Atticus, Aldrich, Palmer, or Tinsley. I, I think you are limiting my choices. My name for this kid is profoundly unhappy. I think so. I think he's having fun. He's singing the blues. Okay, you have a good attitude. I don't have such a good attitude. <laughs> Who wore it better? Pablo Percasso, Sylvester Stabones, or President Wufro Wilson? I just want to know which of these animals ate the banana. Which one? <laughs> Yeah. Hey, come on, confess, confess. I, I don't know. I just, I, I go on Pinterest and I go, oh, there's a bunch of animals with banana peels on their head. And you, I'll look you, at, I'll spend minute. the day looking at them. These were not all on the same site. You, you, what is it they call it now? You have curated. Yes. You, you've compiled this assortment from yes. various places. So what you're saying is that there's more than one person photographing animals with banana peels on their head. This scares me. You want to know why I was not unhappy during the lockdown? I don't want to leave my house and meet the people who are taking the pictures of the animals with banana peels on their head. It's right. better here. Better there's here a whole collection. Wait, yes. you, you can find a photo of just about anything on the internet. Who wore Alas. it better? Now, this yes. isn't really who wore it better. This is more like which store do you like better? But we're already in the who wore it better sort of uh, theme. We've got Masturbate and Tackle. It's a, a fish store or or the store called Whore's Store. Which one wore it better? Which one I, would you go into? I say that the Truth in Advertising Award goes to the store on the left, on the right, on the right. The Whore's <laughs> right. Store. The Whore's Store, yes. Whore's Stores. Okay, what song is this kitty cat listening to? Uh, Push It from Salt and Peppa, Working for the Weekend by Loverboy, or anything from the band Train. There are no wrong answers. I, I, I again, my, my puzzlement is who is doing this to animals. That's all I care about. <laughs> right? They're and why would they make the animal listen to any of those things? That's not, that, yeah, no. No, just no. <laughs> who were it better, Beyonce in this outfit or the strawberry candies? Oh, I for sure, the those. strawberry candy. Strawberry I love candy those. Rocks, rocks I it. love those. You'll always find those at someone's grandma's house. Who wore it better? The queen lady or um, uh, uh, Big Bird? Well, I mean, there's nobody better than Big Bird. I mean, when the <laughs> queen talks, she almost makes that same clicking sound sometimes. But Big Bird has that that has the clicking thing better. Yes. Yes. Uh, who wore it better? We've got Cedric. His nickname is Meatball Cobbledinkle. Or we have Frederick Frederick. Someone named him Frederick Frederick. His first name and his last name is Frederick and Frederick. I don't, I don't know. I'm starting to, I'm starting to, my eyes are glazing over. I did notice that the one with the uh, computer, the Apple uh, notebook yeah, also the... has an Apple watch on. He does. He does. So <laughs> if I got to keep the uh, accoutrement, I would go with the one with the expensive hardware because all the one on the right has is just, just stuff you shirt and tie. Find thrift store right but the one on the left gets you a computer and a watch so yeah it's cedric Co so you're going with cedric cobbledinkle yes but purely for my own self-interest what the heck is that <laughs> help me figure out what this halloween costume was i couldn't figure out what it was i didn't know if she was trying to be i wasn't sure that's why i put it in there it's like okay you're gonna help me figure out what all is, right what my is it? guess would be she needs a few more legs and she can be a grub is that it? Okay. I wasn't sure because it sort of I don't looks know. like a shell. I don't but know. Then I was like, well, grub. I'm not sure. A grub. Okay. I think grub. Okay. That's good. Uh, this is Harriet Hound, Hound, Houndflarp. 
and she's a hair model. Which look is better for uh, Harriet Hounflarp, the short hair or the long hair? I thought we were going to do like five or six of these. I, I don't, <laughs> don't even, I, how many are we into here? I don't know. We're almost done. But oh, we, good. Do you like, do you like Harriet Hounflarp with the short hair or the long hair? Uh, I have a long hair dog, so I'll go with the long hair. Okay. Plus she looks a little bit like, you know, do you, who is it who played? Oh, um, I can't think of her name. She played um, 99 on Get Smart. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 What is yeah. it? Barbara Felden, is it? I think so. But yeah, I see the yeah. resemblance. A little, little bit there. And then you were asking, yeah, there's people who take photos of no of more. Do not ask me <laughs> any more questions about are you banana a, peel. Are you ginger or do you go for the Marianne? Are you a ginger gal or Marianne? Well, uh in this particular instance, I I think Marianne looks more approachable. Yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ginger and then, looks there like you she go. doesn't want to have any part of us. And frankly, I don't blame her. That's how you roll. So that was fun. Thank you. That is how I roll. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, what are you hoping for the world in the future? Gosh. <laughs> the worst you know, question. I am never going to be Miss America. So I never thought I would have to answer this question. <laughs> right. I thought this question was just for people who won the Miss America competition. Yeah. Yeah, and everybody says world peace. World so, peace, right? Yeah, we yeah. Still don't what have am it. I hoping for? Yeah. Uh, I would, I would say uh, better education. Okay, for everyone. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, how do we get your book? Oh, uh, well, there are lots of ways. I believe in supporting uh, small bookstores, so you can certainly march right in there and ask for my book by name. Uh, Tori Ryder is my name. And she said, what a life on the air is the book from tortoise books. Um, or if you like things easy, you can go on, you know, who.com and just look it up and click it. And if you want to be extra nice to me, you can put that info up uh, at the end of this. Interview Absolutely. Or, I will. Okay? Absolutely. I will. Um, Cause you've been very nice to all your guests about that. And I know because I've listened and You're watched nice. your You're show. Very nice. I I saw a quote that you said about your kids that you have mixed feelings about them. Ex I do. Explain that. I liked that because I knew I got it. I totally got it. But it's one of those things that people don't usually say. Yeah, well, I'm famous for that uh, or not famous for that, as you rightly point out, because it's radio. Um, I, I Well, let me back up and say a good marriage, in my opinion, is one where you only want to kill each other about twice a day. Right. So starting from there. Um, I have mixed feelings about my kids on the like basis. Love is love is guaranteed. Right. As I used to tell them all the time, you know, I love you always, but right at this moment, Ami doesn't like you very much. Like that, that is a, that's a, they've heard that before. Um, so my feelings about my kids, now they're young adults. One of them is a second year in university. One of them is done oh. with university. Oh my gosh. No, so yeah. I get to experience them as young people. Yeah. And the older one knows, for example, that it's very important in our family that we pick organizations that do good work and support them. And he was raised to do that. And I couldn't believe that I had to remind him like 12 times to, to he got a job. And I had to remind him that he should pick some places and organizations to support. And when I had to remind him about the 12th time, I, I didn't like him too much right then. I felt like, what, what the heck, dude? you know, where's your appreciation? Yeah. So that's what I mean when I say, you know, and he did the right thing eventually. And I, I didn't ask which groups and I didn't ask how much, but I'm assured that he has, has done, you know, what we expect of him as a citizen of the world. So Absolutely. does that answer your question? It does. And I get it. Cause you're right. Love is that's a guarantee. Yeah. I'm going to love you. I'm always going to like you though. Uh, okay. It depends on the day and what's going on, but I, I hear you, but and I liked that you put, I have mixed feelings about my kids. So do you, do you feel like, um, well, I, may I ask the ages of your children? Um, yes, we've got one that is 16 and uh, just got the first job. And then the other one is 12, but he looks like he's 17. Oh boy. That's got to scare the jeepers out of you. Yeah. And he's going and he's in a special program. So he actually goes to high school. Wow. You so, got a plate full there. I do. I do. So, and now he wants to be an actor. 
kind of oh, well wants to try it out i was like can we just do community theater i don't want you to be a hollywood type but try it know. out if yeah. anyone can talk you out of it you should let them but the yeah. people who really 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 want to do it it's like radio if anybody yeah. can talk you out of it you should let them yes. yes but if no one can talk you out of it then give it your give it your best yeah 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 so, and yeah. and do you ever feel with your kids like oh maybe i didn't get maybe i didn't cover this well enough oh all the time all the time all the time yeah I mean, it's, it's plus, you know, well, we also had a daughter, a stepdaughter who had died, um, which, but that was seven years ago, but it's still, it still sticks. It's one of those sure. things that you never, it never heals, but it's also not at the forefront of your, of your brain. So you, you move on with life and you, um, I don't know how to explain it. It's, well, it's very, it was, it was very impactful, obviously losing a child. Uh, but I'm, she, I'm she was sure. 22. Yeah. I can only, I can only imagine that's all I can do is imagine. I have no actual you know, basis in experience for this. People who I, have lost children, it, we're part of this weird club where we get each other. Cause it blows a hole in your universe. It shows you that like, whoa, at any time, yeah. you know, the worst could happen. And then you have to sort of rebuild knowing that the worst has happened. So it makes you stronger. I'm not, I'm not suggesting it. <laughs> no, not, no, I'm no, not, no. I'm, saying, I'm try sure it you're out. not. Try I'm it out. Sure you're not. Well, it's um, like, you yeah. know, when you when you have are any of these children biologically or adoptively, like, did you start any of these children out in life? Uh, well, the one who had passed away. No, that was my stepdaughter, but I had known her since she was three. But there's a reason I'm asking this. Particular oh, these question. other children I gave birth to. Yes. Okay, so one I gave birth to in a hallway because the hospital left me in the hallway. But go whoa, on. whoa. So the reason that the reason that I say this yeah. is when I was I was sort of a reluctant. I was a phobic mother. Yeah. I, I was I was phobic, and I always loved children of uh, that were in in ages where you could talk to them. Yeah. But if, if I uh, twice I dated a gentleman who had children and I really enjoyed their children very much. Right. Um, but I um, was afraid to have them and really afraid. And the thing I was most afraid of was that I, I wouldn't love them. Oh, gosh, no, that just comes all through. Well, all through the pregnancy, I would say to my husband, what, what if I don't? What if I what if I'm like that song in chorus line? What if I feel nothing? Mm -hmm. And he would say, well, you know, you're a pretty good actress. You can fake it till you, till you get the hang of it. You, you That's a great answer a though. And then, and then to your point about stuff that you don't realize is real until it happens to you, even after they, they gave me, like, even after I had the baby, it was, if they'd said, Oh, here's your puppy, you know, you'll have a nice time and you want him to pay for college. I, I might've said, okay to that. It might've been about the same, but when they placed the child on my body, it was as though I had lived in a house all my life thought I knew it well. And all of a sudden somebody turned on a light in a room that I had not even known existed. Yes. The room of love of children was there. I hadn't known it. So I would imagine in the worst possible, most horrible, most regrettable way, the room of loss is one that you cannot know exists until you I are don't, forced to walk into it. And I never, I don't even, there's a thing too. And believe me, I can get pretty ragey about things in general. I don't wish it on my my worst enemy. Of course I, not. It's it it is it blows a hole through your universe, and sometimes it's not real, but then it is, and yeah. so it's the reality that then you carry on holding that and knowing, and and again, it was not our fault, but still, you feel a sense of failure. And I, I've got some pretty good, you know, I've got a good beat on self-esteem and all of that. And I, you know, I can put things where they need to be and compartmentalize them to, but that one. I don't one, think it's logical. I can't imagine it's, it's logical. It's not. And so your brain tries to make sense of it, but it's senseless. So you do spend a lot of time, but then it's been seven years. So you learn then to, um, it's a, the only way I can explain it. It's a wound that never heals. Well, but it's I not am... supposed to, but it's also, not, but it also doesn't affect absolutely every, I would say the first two years, it does affect everything. Oh my gosh. It affects everything you do every minute. It's on your, it's on your brain. But then as you it, now we've, it's been seven years. So you have to, you know, try to make new memories and a new life and just know that this is something that happened to you. I mean, think about yourself. Like when you were 18, maybe something crazy happened. It's part of who you are, but you don't carry it around with you every single day. 
Well, I would imagine sense. that it, it's like the room. You learn how to close the door sometimes. Yes. And sometimes the door blows wide open when you don't expect it. But I right. would imagine that learning how to close that door yeah. would take at least two years for anybody. Oh, yeah. It just, and then, you know, and then the anniversary pops up and you start remembering. You're like, oh, I don't want to go back and do that again. But, but so I saw that you're running. I saw that you're running to, that's to what take I'm doing. care of yourself. How's that yeah. going for you? It's, it's okay. I Again, I don't feel really comfortable running and I feel like I look like a dummy. So because I feel what? like, self, I feel dumb when I'm running. I feel like I look ridiculous. Oh, but, I've got, I've got, I, 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 I see now another reason why I don't run. A, I'm klutzy. I fall on a paper clip. But I like swimming because most of the time nobody even knows who you are. You got a mask, you got goggles, you got a mask, true. you've got a, a cap and goggles, and yeah. everybody looks terrible mostly. But that might be a hard thing about living in LA is so many more people live at the gym. Oh, I've never gone to a gym in my life. I'm never going to. No, I'm no, 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 no. I'll just do that. Okay, so I'll let you go. Thank you so much for doing Thank this. Thank you. Uh, and, and I um, appreciate gonna, it. If you have questions, send me an email and I'll answer them. Yes, yeah, send me a bunch of photos so that I can put them in. And it has it has been a pleasure. I'm going to jump because my phone's actually ringing. So it's perfect timing on your part. And thank you. Thank I'm you so much.